Hello miniature lovers, welcome back to Miniature Fairy Tales. My name's Carissa and today I'm going to show you this design I've made in 124 scale for this arched window and door. Now I did make this for a customer but she has graciously allowed me to share this with you as well as add it into my Etsy store so it'll be going online soon. In the meantime I wanted to make this video just to show you how to construct these little guys and hopefully this will come in handy for you in future projects. So let's get started. You'll see here I've got my acetate cut out from the Cricut and I always leave the cover on my acetate while it's cutting. Uh, so I am removing that out now on my cutting mat here and you'll see these are the cuts for the design. Um, so I'm just going to take some time to take them out of the frame and make sure everything is gone and then we can put them into some kind of a uh, order that makes sense. Now guys I am a little bit croaky, I am getting over a little bit of sickness um, so please do excuse me if uh, my voice cuts in and out a little bit, I am getting over it. Um, you'll see that I've got these main thick arches and there are five of these. I like to put them together to make sure that they fit nice and snug before I start the gluing process. Now you may find when you flip them out of the frame that they um, turn over and they're not 100% symmetrical. So please do dry try them first, to, uh, put, it, put them together and make sure they do fit nice and flush, otherwise you may have trouble gluing later. And you can see here I'm also doing the same with the small window arch. And with these door pieces, there are three of them. Um, two of them will go together with a piece of acetate in the middle as the window, and then that final one will have um, some wooden planks placed on the top. So um, we'll take some time and go through that and I'll show you how that process works. So you can see here I'm just starting to place these planks. Now you'll see that one of the planks has a little tiny bit cut out of it. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Yep, you see the piece I've just placed on the left? It has a tiny little cutout in it. So that's how you know where to place that particular part and you can place the others around it. It just simplifies it a little bit for you so that um, it's not as hard to kind of figure out where things go and fit them um, in an evenly spaced kind of way because you want to be able to leave enough little gaps in between these little planks to make them look authentic. So that's why one of them has that little tiny cutout so you can see where it fits flush around the window. Just putting that last one on now. And we've added these just as I said earlier to make it look a little bit more authentic like it is a wooden door. You can see I'm adding the smallest decorative piece to the top of that pile now and it sits in the middle um, of the other five just to give it a little bit of decoration on the top. Um, you can see with the window these pieces are tiered so um, they sit in a step like effect on top of each other. Um, there is one smaller part that goes on the inside and then the rest of the smaller um, elongated stick looking parts they actually get layered up on top of each other and they sit at the bottom as the sill so um, that can be a little bit fiddly uh, just take your time when you're gluing try and use minimal glue with them and then um, stick them together and when they're dry add them to the bottom uh, and you'll have yourself a nice little layered arched window. So you can see I'm just taking some time to peel the outside layers off of the acetate. I like to leave them on for as long as I can until I'm ready to glue. It just helps to protect uh, the um, acetate and um, you know just so it won't gather dust or get scratches on it. 
Uh, once I've got those layers off, I am going to use my gem glue and just put a really nice thin little layer around the outside of the opening of the window on one of those door pieces. We'll add my acetate onto that and if I do get any um, excess that's coming out the edges then I'll just use my skewer and go in and get rid of that before it dries. It's always much easier to do this before it dries rather than after uh, just so that you can get rid of um, anything that might be um, able to be shown, uh, able to be viewed. So then once you've done that you can take the um, other part of the door um, and this time we'll be using tacky glue uh, because we no longer need gem glue, we're not working in plastics and we're going to add that to the entire edge of uh, that door, the entire surface and then we're going to put that extra piece right on top making sure that all of the outer edges are lined up and in particular that the window um, edges are lined up. We don't want to be able to see any edges or overlaps or anything like that. And then you can use your brayer to go over the top, make sure that everything is stuck down nicely and remove any excess glue from the outer edge if there is any. And once you've done that you can pop that aside to dry and then move on to your wooden planks. Now you can see there the first one I'm going to stick on is the one I spoke of earlier with the little indent that's been removed from it. So it fits nice and snugly around that window opening. And as I explained earlier, this is so that you can get some nice even spacing with all the planks if you know exactly where the first one is supposed to go. It makes it a lot easier for placing the rest of them because it's much easier to recognise which part goes where. So as you're doing these, it's just um, a light layer of glue. You don't want too much. In particular, you don't really want glue sticking out in between. The other thing I would suggest, if you want to um, accentuate these wooden planks, then you might consider painting the door black first and then putting the planks on top. And that way the black will show through the gaps and you'll have more shadow look. Um, for when when the planks are on and that way you can paint your planks brown or gray or which, whichever whichever color you choose and it'll help with um, aging and authenticity And through the magic of video, we've now placed all those planks and we're just putting the last one on now and making sure that that excess glue is removed. And there you can see we have completed the front of the door. So now we're in a position where we can add this part of the door with the planks onto the other two parts with the window. Now this will give us four layers because we have two with the window and then we have one layer and then an additional layer with the planks on top. So it's a nice thick four layer door. Um, so we add tacky glue and just the same as we did before, make sure our edges are all lined up, that there's no excess glue popping out and um, we end up with a nice sturdy door. Now this is only wood panelled on one side, it's supposed to be like a display door but if you do want it to be able to show on the other side you can add planks to the other side as well, just cut a few extra, no worries. 
and you can see here um, I have now moved on to working on the arches for the door so there are five large arches and one thinner arch so just as I've done with a previous door design that you might have seen on my YouTube channel um, I like to glue these in pairs I do this so that A, there's faster drying time, but B, so that everything goes together a little bit nicer rather than trying to glue everything together at once. Now, I would say, um, please do dry trial first. These are not 100% symmetrical, as I said earlier. Um, so that means that if one is flipped over the opposite way, it may not line up properly. So please do dry try them first and make sure that everything fits in the way you want it to. And then of course you can add your glue and place them together just as I'm doing here in the video. Now with the last thicker piece and the thinner piece, um, we are going to put these two together. So that thinner piece needs a light layer of glue and then it's to be glued to the centre of the thicker piece. So I've just zoomed in here so you can see what I mean by that. It doesn't go to the outer or the inner edge, it goes right in the middle. And that's just to add a little bit of layering and texture. Um, and then once you've done that, um, you can set those aside to dry and then you can move on to the acetate for the window. So I've just stripped off the protective layers and now I'll take the thickest piece, the thickest arch for the window and again using gem glue I'm going to add a layer of this to that um, section of cardstock. Um, this is Cricut craft board I'm using if you are interested um, But depending on what scale you make this in you can use any material that suits So if you go up a scale use a thicker material if you go down a scale use a thinner material um, Using our skewer just to remove any excess glue that um, might have come out from that window uh, and the important thing here is to make sure that the bottom of the acetate lines up perfectly with the bottom of the arch uh, and then from that point you can take that very very small piece um, and because it's so small I'm adding the gem glue onto the actual acetate not onto the piece um, for me personally this just makes it easier to line that piece up so um, that's being stuck to the acetate at the bottom of the arch and again lining it up as perfectly as you can with the bottom of the uh, the bottom edges of the arch and now we're back in with our tacky glue again and we are just going to start um, gluing these longer layered pieces together. Um, these are the pieces that I referred to as sticks earlier. Um, there are five of these, I believe, and they all need to be layered on top of each other. Um, look, it can get a bit fiddly and you're trying your best to keep them all lined up perfectly, but when you're working with little pieces of this side, it, it can be difficult. So just take your time, use your tweezers if it helps and um, line them up and stick them down and then once they're dry you can line them up with the bottom of the window. And again through the magic of video just going to stick that last piece on now and then they'll be put aside to dry for a little while. And now it's time to add the next layer onto the window. So it would be the next um, thinnest arch. Gonna add a little bit of tacky glue onto that and turn it around and add it on top of that back thickest piece. 
So you'll see that it will line up around the outside edges, but it will not line up to the inside edges. And that's what's going to give you your stepped effect. And again, just as you did before, you're doing the exact same thing with the final piece for the window. So it is the thinnest arch. Adding some tacky glue onto that and again lining it up with the outside edges of the arch. It won't line up with the inside edges. Giving you that final step and that'll conclude the arch part of your window. Now at this point you can take those five layered uh, sticks as I called them and uh, you can add some tacky glue to the bottom edge of your window. Um, I found this was the easiest way and then I want you to turn it over so that the layered side is facing the window so that the nice smooth edge is facing outward to where you can see and putting those two together um, you can stick that to the bottom of the window and it's going to stick out like the windowsill. Um, because it is layered and it is the layered side that is sticking to the bottom of the window it might take a little bit of um, encouragement to adhere so just push those pieces together and hold them in place for a short while and they should take no problems. And then finally here we're going to um, put our, uh, our pairs uh, that we have for our arches together. So um, adding a couple of those pairs together, uh, same process, making sure that your edges are nice and clean and everything's lined up. And it is very important that everything's lined up and that's because you're adding thickness to give a 3D effect. But also our little door has to fit inside this arch. So it's really important to make sure that your inside edges are nice and smooth. If they're not, you can give them a little bit of sanding. Um, it would have to be very fine. Uh, but for the most part, as long as you can line them up, the door should slide in no problems at all. And then of course, adding on the final piece with the decorative layer on top. Um, and that should give you a nice thick archway as you can see here. Now just a short word on the windows while we're here. Um, you don't have to have the acetate. Um, it is good to hold the window together as I think you were able to pick up um, in the construction here. But um, I do know the customer that I made this for, she was going to use some um, mesh for in the window. So you don't always have to use acetate. If you were going for more of a medieval look, you could use different things. You could even use bars in the window if you wanted to. Um, and of course, because I can't make these things without finishing them, I had to have a door handle. Now, this is quite different to what my customer asked for. This is just something I added in myself. So I've taken a flower shaped bead end and a little gold bead and I've added these two together to make what I think looks like a cute little handle. So I'm using gem glue here because we are working with metal. Um, and I'm just going to pop that little flower shaped bead end onto my door here and then add a little bit more gem glue on the inside and add my little gold bead and uh, then that just finishes off the door and uh, gives it a nice little handle. So there you go guys, that is the little door and window project complete. Now as I said earlier, this will be available on my Etsy store soon. If you would like to uh, pick up the SVG and make it for yourself, you can also change the size of my SVG. So this is in 124. Um, I know my customer will be making it in 148 and you can also scale it up or down further as you please. As long as the Cricut can cut it, it shouldn't be a problem. So guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to join me on Instagram or Facebook, you can see my details here. And if you'd consider subscribing, that'd also be awesome so that you can come and visit me again for more projects in the future. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.
Bye for now.